Good morning, Oxen Hill. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. We gather in the name of the risen Lord. Christ is risen, hallelujah. We gather as sisters and brothers of the resurrected one. Christ is risen, hallelujah. We gather to share our faith and to worship God. Christ is risen, hallelujah. We gather to proclaim the good news of Easter. Christ is risen, alleluia, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, please forgive my voice. It's been a hectic weekend for us as we put my brother-in-law to rest. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and on behalf of our pastor, Mija Cho, we welcome all of you to Oxen Hill United Methodist Church in person and virtual worship service. Um, and pray you're doing great, especially after the wonderful um, Easter service we had last Sunday. And um, just praying you're doing well on this second Sunday of Easter. Amen. We're not perfect, but we're a great multicultural family, as you can see by looking at our faces. Um, and everyone is welcome to Oxen Hill United Methodist Service, I'm United Methodist Church. No matter your color, no matter your, your um, creed, no matter the language you speak, your national origin, or your sexual or orientation, we're all God's children and everyone is welcome in this church. Is there anyone here who is visiting with us for the first time and would like to introduce him or herself? Okay, we know Jennifer is not here for the first time. She's, all, she's family, she's always with us, Grace's sister, and we're always grateful to see her. Um, according to Acts 1, um, verses 7 to 9, it is not for you, Jesus said, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. We're grateful Christ is risen indeed. As we prepare for worship, let us remember to trust in the word of God who promises to supply all our needs in accordance with his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us also remember our Savior's call to go out and make disciples of all nations and continue to pray for peace and justice in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Haiti, in Congo, in Sudan, here in the US and around the world. Thank you very much and have a blessed Sunday. Praise the Lord, Oxen Hill. Praise the Lord. Let's stand all over the church and sing loud praise to Jesus, our King. Somebody ought to say, Hallelujah. Amen. Come, Christian. 
heart before God. Let us pray. God of the resurrections, we gather this morning as a community of believers. We sing hallelujah, amen, Christ is risen. We come with joy to greet one another and to tell again and again the amazing news. Christ is risen. Love is victorious our death. You have given us new life in the name of your Son. May our singing, praying, listening, proclaiming be a testimony to the power of your love and to make us a new creation as a community of faith. Patient Lord, you wait for us to understand. You wait for us to remove the blinders of prejudice, fear, unbelief, confusion, and ignorance. You have offered to us the greatest miracle of all time, the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. We sang and celebrate last Sunday but week has passed when we have slid back into all the ways of our lives. Shake us up, O oh Lord. Shake us up and cause us to look with new eyes on our Savior, who came that we might have life abundantly and serving all who are in need. Mighty God, we bring our heart to receive your healing and restorations. We bring our heart to give you, to sing, hallelujah, Christ is risen. That is the reason we come together to celebrate your resurrections and our salvations. Bless us and bring us the Holy Spirit in this moment that we truly feel your healing presence and your grace and your blessings. Mighty God, as we offer our heart to you, we bring our concerns and joys and petition and supplications in your holy name. The names in our heart for our loved ones. The names in our heart, the community friends, Mariga, we bring 
supplications for our mission and ministry and BBS and youth and Sunday school and children's ministry, bread ministry. Bless us, O oh God. Bless our souls. Bless our service that we give to you for your glory as we come together in this holy moment. Bless this worship service and fill our heart so that we can truly, truly experience your resurrections and we can shine your light to others. And we believe that you bring your healing and your blessings and your restoration upon us and upon our church, upon the community, and upon the world. And now, as children of God, we offer our prayers that your son told us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture is the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible, sharing among the believers. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, about any of their possessions but held everything in common. The apostles continued to bear powerful witness to the, rex to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. An abundance of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them. Those who owned properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales, and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sister Elia. Now this is the children's and youth times, and children's youth may come forward. Melanie. Good morning, Charlie and Melanie. Good morning. How you feel? Good. Good, good. Okay, Charlie, I heard you that you have a puppy. What's your puppy's name? Milo. Milo, good for you. I'm glad you have a, a doggy. So it's going to be your good friend, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you something and our Savior. Here is uh, the Holy Communion set that uh, Sally and um, uh, Mary and Barbara Hale Johnson, they set it up for us. I'm going to have this one of them. Okay, so do you know why we celebrate the Holy Communion? You can use the microphone. Not exactly. Not exactly. So you want to learn why we celebrate the Holy Communion? Okay, well, so when we celebrate the Holy Communion, do you remember we celebrate the Easter Sunday last Sunday? Right? And then this is to remind us that this is actually the represent the Jesus body 
and Jesus' blood. Jesus died on a cross so that uh, when Jesus died on a cross and then this represented Jesus' body. That's why we use the, the bread. It means Jesus' body is broken for us, died for our sin, died for your sin. And also this the blood of Jesus Christ, this is the wine, which is we use the grape juice. It represents Jesus' blood that Jesus shed for us for our sins. So every time we celebrate the Holy Communion, it reminds us that what Jesus did for us, for our sin, and give us eternal salvation. So when we celebrate, I consecrate and then proclaim the good news that Jesus died for our sin, give us new life so that we can go to paradise, right? So we have to believe Jesus Christ as our savior. So that when we celebrate, Jesus comes in this element. And then Jesus be with us, always present with us. So, so this is very important because if we, this uh, bread and wine just kind of light, deal with lightly, I don't think God pleased it. So because God became human being in Jesus Christ, died for our sin, so that when we break the bread, it reminds us of Jesus' death. And when we drink the, the wine, it reminds us Jesus' blood. So that when we drink it, when we take it, the bread, and then Jesus comes into our heart, we can have a chance to meet with Christ. So that when I you know, bless this bread and wine, you make sure that Jesus is here and Jesus around here and Jesus bring the blessings. And sometimes you have chance to experience the risen Christ through this element. So that with, every time when you uh, receive the, this bread and wine, and you can say the thanks be to God and you can take it. Um, you can just come here and just take it because pastor gave it to me. No, 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 because I present Jesus Christ who died for our sin. So that the reminders and also in this element, there is the Jesus body and blood of Jesus Christ. So that the, you can remember what Jesus did for us, right? That's why. So I'm gonna ask you, Charlie and Melanie. So when I say to you, Jesus, this is Jesus' body is broken for you. What do you say? This body. Yes, thanks be to God. You can always say thanks be to God and you can take it because Jesus died for your sin so that you can go to heaven. And when I say, this is Jesus, blood of the Jesus Christ, shared it for you, what do you say? Thanks be to God. <laughs> Can you try to, to both together? Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So you always receive this the very important bread and wine with the give thanks, with the gratitude. Because this is very important that you never know, even though you don't see it, even though you don't see the Jesus here, but we know that Jesus here, God is here with you. So it reminds you God is here with you and God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sin, so give us eternal salvation so that we can go to paradise. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And you give us this element, bread and wine, to remind us what God did for us. As we take this, consecrate the body and blood of the Jesus Christ, remind us to take seriously that Jesus present in this element symbolize God's love and God's grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen, amen. Thank you, you may go.
Good morning, church. The scripture lesson is taken from John 20, verses 19 to 31, and I'll be reading from the com Common English Bible. Jesus appears to the disciples. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the father sent me, so I'm sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the 12, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands, put your hand into my side. No more disbelief, believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's son, and that believing you will have life in his name. This is the word of God. Thank you, Melanie. Let us pray. Dear God, as we hear your word, may we be transformed into a true community of believers ready to go into the world to testify that Christ is alive, active in our lives today and bring us your healing and restorations. In the name of raising Christ, we pray, amen. amen. Brother Steve, would you show the quarters on the screen? According to ABC News, Photographer Don Martland captured the Statue of Liberty getting jabbed by a bolt of lightning during a violent thunderstorm in New York Harbor. Can you show us another picture? Martland said it was pure luck. I usually shoot the city in storms, but I could not see anything with all the low clouds. This is why I went close to the Statue of Liberty. Just wanted to see something, he explained. Do you believe that he captured the lightning on the Statue of Liberty? Can you believe that picture? Actually, it happens. Well, some might say that he used the AI to create this picture because nowadays, we see a lot of fakes in the news, even create the movies. We then try to find evidence to prove or disprove the things about which we have questions or doubt. We often have doubt when we hear of unusual things. In our gospel lesson today, we encounter Thomas missing out on singing the resurrected Jesus. The church often describes Thomas as a doubting Thomas. So how then does Thomas encounter resurrected Christ? Well, he came back to the community of believers in the upper room. The disciples told Thomas that they had witnessed the risen Christ together. And Thomas said that, oh no, you're kidding me. I cannot believe. 
and he refused to believe what they said unless he touched the Jesus' wounds. Thomas said to them in verse 25, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, I don't believe Thomas, but I don't blame him either. When Jesus appeared a second time one week later, Thomas was present with the community of believers. And Christ came, stood among them and said, peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Jesus already knew what Thomas had in mind. And he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. So what do we learn from Thomas? First, when we separate from the community of believers, we miss the opportunity to meet the risen Christ. We notice that the risen Christ appears within the community of believers that we call the church. When we separate ourselves from the church, we can miss the opportunity to experience the risen Christ. As Sister Dahlia read for us in Act Scripture, that when they receive the Holy Spirit, they are getting together to assemble together, to share everything together. When we assemble together in one place, we celebrate life, death, and resurrection through our Holy Communion. When we get together to listen to the words of God, we, am, we are empowered by God's strength and God's promise. When we sing together the glory of God, We experience the Holy Spirit that renews our heart, and minds, and souls. So if we separate ourselves from the community of believers, it is rare to chance to experience the Holy Spirit. Second, when we gather together in the community of believers, we experience the transformations. We are open like a Thomas, Thomas is like a modern day cynic. He was separated himself once and came back. Thomas now turns into a confession of faith. My Lord and my God. When Thomas encountered the resurrected Jesus, he did not say teacher, but now Thomas accepted Jesus as his Lord and his God rather than male teacher. A teacher can teach us knowledge of the world, but cannot give us the eternal salvations. Thomas truly believed that Jesus is the Son of God and his Savior when he got together with the community of believers. Otherwise, he missed the opportunity again. Faith begins with honest questions. Doubt can be a bad luck of honesty. Thomas sought to understand how Jesus' resurrection was possible, and he needed proof. Anselm of Canterbury, who was a theologian in the 11th century, wrote, quote, faith seeking understanding, quote. He articulated the close relationship between faith and human reason for the existence of God, and he contributed how faith forms into understanding. Thomas overcame his doubt through his honest questions when he got together with the community of believers because he sought to understand how and what he had heard was possible. In my divinity school training, I learned honest questions 
and brings understandings and closer relationship with God. This is why Bible study with other believers is crucial to grow our faith. With the right questions, we make our faith grow and turns us into followers of the truth. So I would say that faith is not the absence of doubt. Instead, it is the transforming of doubt into a solid reality as we long, as long we seek God. Thomas sought the understanding. Meanwhile, he clung to God, even though he was wondering. Thomas always say that, as long as I put my fingers on his side, I won't believe. But he came back to the community of believers, and he believed Jesus as Jesus is as his Lord and his God. But above all, Jesus said, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen yet still have come to believe. We learn from Thomas that we are as Easter people. We seek God in every circumstances so that God can guide us into the truth rather than ignorance. And I just want to give you some example. A little young girl came to school. Her science teacher told her that, hey, as you look at the, these materials, and you see that there is the existence here, but how come you know that God is existence? See, there is no God there. And then and then the science teacher tried to prove the evaluations about the you know, God's existence. And then later, a 10 years old, a girl raised her hands. Teacher, okay, when you go to the hospital, you get surgery and you get the uh, CAT scan. And you will get a surgery and you will get to see the, how to do the CAT scan. You can be able to see but uh, remember, I cannot know that what you thought today. I cannot know that you thought what you did. Because you don't see it, it does not mean it doesn't exist. Because your thought, I don't see it. But uh, you always thinking something, but I don't see it. So it does not mean that if you don't see it, it doesn't exist. So she said, God is exist, even though you don't see the air, but you can breathe the air. If you don't see the Holy Spirit, you can see and you can feel the Holy Spirit. But teacher cannot say anything to her. And third lesson today is Christ can come to any room. Christ can even come through the locked doors. Christ can come into place of doubt. If we have questions through prayer and study, the risen Christ comes and bring us peace. The risen Christ can breathe into our dried bones with the Holy Spirit and make us to be an Easter people. When our scars bring us doubt, God's grace embraces us and God's grace shows up in our broken places. The resurrected Christ shows up with his own visible wounds to heal our wounds. When we join together in Jesus' name, we celebrate the body and blood of the Jesus Christ. We can cooperate his effort to experience God's grace. The resurrected Christ meet the disciples in the upper room when they hide behind the locked doors. The disciples were hunkered down with fear. They were afraid because they betrayed Jesus. They were afraid because they abandoned him to the mobs and to a death on a cross. They are afraid because they shouted to crucify Jesus. But the resurrected Christ appeared to them anyway and said to them, 
peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing to witness Jesus forgave them and empowered them with peace and with the Holy Spirit. They don't deserve this forgiveness. We don't deserve God's love and God's grace. But God grants this amazing love through life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that we cannot comprehend, we cannot imagine in our worldly conventional wisdoms. Remember, Christ can come into any room Dear siblings in Jesus Christ, how often do you doubt after you pray? How many of you spend literally years of your lives worrying about your health, worrying about what people thinking of you, worrying about finance, and worrying about your loved ones, or worrying about tomorrow? If we could truly believe Jesus has risen from the grave, there is nothing to worry about. As Jesus appears to the community of believers, as we call the church, who were afraid and worried, Jesus invited them to experience God's forgiveness to experience the resurrection with our honest questions, with our honest confessions. If we truly want to experience God's peace and resurrection of Christ, remember, Jesus appears in the community of believers. And Jesus said to them, come to me who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. The resurrected Christ comes to our broken place. The resurrected Christ comes to us any room, any situations, and give us forgiveness and breathe into us the Holy Spirit and offer us peace the world cannot give to us. So clung to God and cling to God in every circumstances with your honest questions and honest confessions. May God peace be with you. May you be blessed to receive the Holy Spirit as you bring your honest questions and honest confession in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Mighty God, we come and listen to the words of the healing and blessing and restorations. We are like a Thomas. Sometimes we doubt after we pray. Sometimes we worry. Sometimes we are afraid. Mighty God, please forgive us. Please. Forgive us our ignorance and stubbornness. We are lazy to come together as a community of believers to worship you. We are lazy sometimes we want to do each way. But mighty God, please bless us. Give us heart to asking honest questions, to ask honest confession to you so that we can truly experience the risen Christ in our daily lives. Even though we see it, but we can feel the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we can receive peace and the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Christ our Lord invite us to his table, all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have failed, failed to, to be obedient, obedient church. church. We have not done, done your will. will. We, have we have broken, broken your law. law. We, have we have rebelled against, against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were as sinners. They proved God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us recite the Apostle Creed all together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. It seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Almighty, Almighty God earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed your love remained steadfast you delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign god brought us to a land flowing with with milk and honey and set before us the way of life and so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and on earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your world and Holy Spirit. 
on the night in which he gave himself up for us, bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body for which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On this day, you raised him from the dead. He was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your, Christ has con your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on earth and gathered here and on this gift of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of the Jesus Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory as we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. That the church says, Amen. Because there is one love, we who are many, we are one body, for all we partake of the one love. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Jesus Christ. The cup which we are sharing is the blood of the Jesus Christ. We as a United Messenger Church, we invite all to experience God's resurrections in Jesus Christ. We invite all, no matter who you are, we come together in this heavenly banquet to receive God's grace and God's love. This is the opportunity to experience the resurrections through this element, the body and blood of the Jesus Christ. If it becomes Christ's broken bodies for us, so give us the eternal salvations, give us experience to resurrections. So take it 
and then come and pray as you receive it and give gratitude with God. As I, we share the, this element, I will serve the, our Holy Communion servers first, and I invite you to come all together on two lines, and you can receive it. And we can receive at one time all together. As I said, this is the body of Christ is broken for you. And also, blood is the same thing. We can take one time all together. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you because God loves you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you because God loves you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you because God loves you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you because God loves you. The body of Christ is broken for you. But the church says, thanks be to God. The blood of the Jesus Christ shed for you. Let the church says, thanks be to God. Let us pray together thanksgiving prayer. Eternal God, 
we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we continue in worship, I invite you to stand all over the church and sing the worship song, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. He is my light, my strength, my song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, my fears are still, my striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, his curse was lost, its grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Amen, amen. You may be seated. The resurrected Christ comes into the community of believers. The resurrected Christ comes behind the locked doors. The resurrected Christ come to us. As long as we cling to God with our honest questions and honest confession, as we experience the resurrection of Christ, we give our thanks and gratitude. All that we have belongs to God as we celebrate our unity as a community of faith and focus our heart on the risen Christ we joyfully lay our possessions at the altar. Through the grace of God and bounty of this church, we have the ability to share our gifts so that all may have 
what they need to leave. We thank God for the opportunity to truly be in fellowship with one another, with the world through our offering today. As we come and bring our tithes offering, our sister Elaine will do the special songs. and surprising God when we thought that death had claimed your only son you amazed us with the resurrections surprise us again with your ability to turn this humble offering into the gifts that will transform the world through our witness to your love we lay our very lives at your feet O oh God knowing that you will use to proclaim and embody the gospel. Let the church says, Amen. Good morning. I'd like to highlight the missions and ministries at Oxon Hill. Our Lenten study this year highlighted five spiritual practices. These were worship, study, serving, giving, and sharing our faith. We were challenged to pray five times a day and worship weekly, to read five verses of the Bible daily and study the Bible, to practice five acts of intentional kindness a week and serve with others, to extend five acts of generosity toward others each month and give generously to God and to let others know you are a Christian and invite five people to church each year. 
Our missions and ministries at Oxon Hill offer the opportunities to meet these challenges and strengthen your spiritual life. Adult and kids Sunday school meets on Sunday mornings at 920. All are invited to attend. The Value Identity Purpose Praise Worship meets Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We have Bible study every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We will be studying the New Testament starting this Wednesday, so please consider joining us for this study. There will be a Vacation Bible School meeting tomorrow, Monday, April 8th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you have fond memories of Vacation Bible School or if you're if it's important to you that Vacation Bible School be offered by Oxon Hill and that we try to reach uh, children with the, with the love of Christ, then we need your help. Um, if you've served in the past in any way and you're willing to serve, again, uh, please join us at that meeting. Um, there's some that doubt that we'll have enough people to, um, to have Vacation Bible School this year. So if it's important to you, please join the meeting or let Pastor Cho know that you're willing to help. Our bread ministry needs your help. If you're interested in this service to the community, please join us on Wednesdays and Thursdays or contact Lynette Cameron, Valerie Harrison, or Cindy Cobley. If you're interested in singing in our adult uh, choir, please see Manny Legaspi. All voices and willing hearts are welcome to praise the Lord through song. Thank you. As we prepare to leave this house of worship, let's stand all over the church and sing with power in your voices, Jesus is alive, hallelujah. benedictions with joy and gratitude hallelujah jesus is alive and go in peace knowing that jesus can enter any rooms jesus can meet you jesus goes with you so bring the good news to others and share the good news because god is with you wherever you go may god bless you may god keep you May God's countenance shine upon you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Death has lost its victory, 
and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. He's alive. He's alive. He's the Alpha and Omega. The first and last is He. The curse of sin is broken and we have perfect liberty. The Lamb of God has risen. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Good morning. Hi, can you hear us? Oh, no. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, yeah. we can. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello Mickey. Hello, Good morning. I miss yeah, you. I love it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. all. Good morning, all. Oh, why didn't they say something? Yeah, right. I her. <laughs> yes, I saw her. So. Yes, it's coming from the you all did a good job today. Well, hello, everybody. This is Lenny. Good morning, Good morning, Lenny. Lenny. You at church or are you on Zoom? Hi, people. Hi, Patty. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Hi, Viv. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Hi, Lenny. Who else is there? Okay. Juanita, Dottie, Virginia. Good to see you all. Same here. Sorry about your loss. Hello, everyone. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you. We do the same. We love you all. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Selena. Vicky, Lindy's on. Did you get a car yet? Yeah. Hi, Christina. How are you? Hello, everybody. Christina says hello. 